Hello, I'm Lee Chantel, and these are my top tips for technology balance. We are excessively using technology and digital devices, and this is sometimes at the expense of other aspects in our life that are important, if not more important. We need greater awareness of how technology works, why we think, feel, and behave in certain ways, and how to balance our use of technology. Because Poor digital boundaries can turn devices from tools into compulsions. And here's why I am speaking to you about this today. My passions are cyber psychology, cyber security, and digital well-being. I'm particularly interested in mindful and conscious use of technology. That's why I'm a digital wellness educator. Last year, I completed my Bachelor of Psychology, where I looked at social robots. And this year, I'm doing my PhD on autonomous vehicles and blockchain technologies. And I love cyber psychology, so I aim it to be a lecturer in this fledging field. Also, I have a new website, digitalequilibrium.com, which I'm a bit excited about. So here's some stats on technology use. The average smartphone owner unlocks their phone 150 times a day, touches their phone over 2,000 times a day, spends almost three hours a day on their phone, and over our years, we will spend 5.5 years on social media. 58% of smartphone users cannot go for one hour without checking their phones. And 67% of people compulsively check, do I have a message? Is that a call? Is it an alert? Even without a prompt, like a ring or a vibration from a notification. However, due to this, this overwhelm and this education on technology, it's leading to more people who want technology balance in their lives. And 63% of consumers try to limit their phone usage. 43% of workers turn off their phones to cope with distractions. And the term digital wellness is increasing in popularity. 60% of HR officers plan to increase support for well-being and mental health this year. And in case you don't know, digital wellness is an optimal state of health, personal fulfillment and social satisfaction that we all are capable of achieving when we use technology. And this is no longer a luxury in the workplace. It's really important for organizations to get on top of, especially with a lot of the work from home stuff we're doing. And this brings me to my digital equilibrium approach. And this is a model. And the, the idea of digital equilibrium is to create lifelong healthy digital habits to thrive online and beyond. And there's six different elements that you can see on the little diagram, and these all need to be understood and in balance. The aim is to identify where this imbalance is, like where your stressors, reactive, unconscious and addictive behaviors are, where they come from, and to manage and change these negatives and harmful behaviors into positive and healthy digital habits. And this is what we can achieve when everything is in balance. So we're going to go through this model and some of my tips today. I have a process called pause, consider, decide, also big on cost benefit analyses. Reflections are great. And in particular, I'm going to go through my top tips today. So let's go for it. And we will start with digital literacy. This is where you understand what is happening online, why you're interacting in a certain way, and why things are used to get you to go onto social media or to your device, as in something is persuasive, it's designed in that way. This is to encourage you to have a look at your privacy and your security settings and understand why these things are really important. I'm very passionate about mis and disinformation online and this is a really important aspect for people to understand because a lot of what's happening online is directing us in certain ways and changing the way we think. 
So this happens through things of algorithms. So these algorithms are designed to keep us consuming content online so that the social media companies are making money from advertising dollars. When this happens, this can lead to echo chambers or filter bubbles. And this is where we only see things that we agree with. We only interact with people who also agree with the things we do. And this process creates polarization where you've got people with strong views on one side of the argument and strong views on the other side of the argument. They're divided and they have the loudest voices and those with moderate views are silenced. Now this exploitative technologies, they have proliferated due to a lack of collective understanding about how platforms work. And a lot of the platforms go to great extent to make sure we don't understand how they work as well and how things impact us. And there's also an important element where there's a lack of regulations and laws in most countries. These unintended consequences from using um, digital devices and social media can take the form of negative mental health, negative aspects in regards to our democracy process and discrimination issues. So some of my top tips for this section include substitution. So where some people might use WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, I'd highly encourage people to use an app called Signal. Where you would use, say, Google or another internet search, I'd suggest that you use DuckDuckGo. And have a look where your privacy settings are and update them. Understand what's happening and change the things you don't agree with. Then we move on to understanding our biases. So there's things that happen online and we react to them in particular ways. So understanding when you see something, know what to actually be worried about, how to look deeper, how to understand the content and how to weigh up what evidence you're given. And this is a really great visual from The Verge that goes through all of these aspects in a bit more depth. So when we think about my pause, consider, decide method, I want you to think of an example here. So the next time someone upsets you online, I want you to pause. And I want you to consider why you have such a strong emotional reaction to this. Then I hope you will make a decision such as not to get caught up in the outrage. Maybe set some time later on, maybe tomorrow, to look into the topic later and when things have chilled out a bit. And choose to act instead of react. Something to action is to watch the social media dilemma and to read their discussion and action guide online. Then let's move on to meaningful interactions and beneficial relationships. And these two are linked because meaningful interactions lead to beneficial relationships when they are, there are expectations between individuals that are created. So some aspects of meaningful interactions are remembering that you have a mutual influence on other people. It's not just you saying stuff to the world, it's that you're hopefully getting something back. Focus on people and aspects and situations that are honest, creative, knowledgeable, positive, inspirational, things that bring you joy. Beneficial relationships are where you both have a connection and you both have support. And these are compromised of patterns where you have quality interactions. So when we think about remote working, which has happened a lot more because of COVID, re remote workers are 3.2 times more likely to be productive if they are satisfied with their social connectivity. And overwhelm comes from things like infinite choice. There's so many things to look at. There's so many things to digest. There's so many people to talk to, and there's just an, a lot of overwhelm. And there's two different types of people. There's a maximizer, and these people exhaustively seek the best. 
they compare decisions with others, they expend more time and energy on this, and when they make a decision, they're actually unhappier with their outcomes. So keeping that in mind, the opposite of that is satisfices, where you accept good enough, don't obsess over other options, you can move on after decisions, and you are happier with outcomes. Hopefully you can be that last person. So some of my top tips for this section are conversations, interactions, and expectations. Conversations are where we interact in a positive and an active way that encourages meaningful conversations with other people. Interactions are where we're moving beyond the superficial and the surface levels and we're digging deeper and trying to get to know someone. Our expectations remember that meaningful interactions can lead to these beneficial relationships. And something to pause, consider, decide. Here's an example. And this can be related to um, maybe having matches if you're online dating, or maybe just the overwhelm of, per of particular things to look at or put your attention to. So when you're faced with this overwhelm, I want you to pause and just consider, do you actually need more things to look at, more people to talk to, more matches online, or should you just focus on people that you already know, you're already communicating and you already have some sort of relationship with? Hopefully you will decide to focus on those people, turn off your location if you're on an online dating app, so you don't get distracted with other potential matches, and organize quality time with people who you enjoy their company. So this week, maybe something to action, is to focus on interacting mindfully online, aim to connect meaningfully with people, and try not to get caught up in superficial interactions and conversations. Now, let's move on to mindful and conscious decision making. This is where you choose where you direct your attention. This means that you have less reactive responses where you act and don't react. This means that you have intentional and active use of technology instead of just passive use. Because when your devices are intrusive, you will be reactive. So some of the things we can think about is like rational versus emotional systems that we have. And these control our human decision-making outcomes and they both have different associations in your brain. Mindfulness is a great concept and it is conscious perception of the present. This is when you're open and you're receptive and there's no judgment and there's no attachment. So thinking about this mindfulness aspect, this is an intentional approach which helps you holistically think about the how, when, where and what and why we interact with technology in the way that we do. When you think about these aspects, it shows the effect of your choices and this then allows for better decision making. So here's some of my top tips. Be intentional and mindful. So focus on my concept of pause, consider, decide that we've gone through a few examples of today. Another thing you can think about is the halt. Are you, hangry? are you hungry? Are you angry? Are you lonely? Or are you tired? Then active use. This is really important. You want to move beyond passively scrolling and just randomly um, doing whatever you do on social media. You want to be using technology in an active way. So, you know, setting so time aside to speak to people, to interact, to go on Twitter and check the news, but making um, decisions to be active and not just scrolling passively. Then those five W's I mentioned before, who, what, when, where, and why. And remember that when you answer those, it will show the impacts and that allows you to make better decisions. So here's a, another example of a pause, consider, decide for this aspect. When you're about to start scrolling online, or maybe when you're in the middle of it, I'd like you to pause. 
and I'd like you consider you to consider why you're doing this now. Um, are you trying to make yourself feel better because you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? And maybe you will decide that you're feeling a bit angry, you've had a bit of a hard day at work, and you understand that when you're angry, you don't make the best decisions, you might say some stuff that you might regret to people you care about, Therefore, you're going to consciously make a decision to look at really positive things like cute animal videos. They always make us feel better. And then you're going to log off after 10 minutes and 10 minutes only. So something you could action this week is to think about how you use social media and how you use your digital devices. Do these things add up with the way you want to spend your time? For example, if it's really important for you to spend time with your family and quality time with your friends and you're always on your phone when you're interacting with them, is this in line with your values? And if not, maybe it's time to make some changes. Now these changes that you would like to make, it'd be great if you could write them down because when you write down a goal, it makes you 40% more likely to achieve it. Now let's move on to worthwhile communication. This is where we exchange relevant and quality information. This is where we use technology to facilitate human interactions, not to replace them. So we have nonverbal cues, behaviors, and body language, and these all serve as social value signals, and they help us work out how others value us, and this is then translated into how we feel about ourselves. And these things are really hard to actually achieve online, but because we're adaptable, we can update how we interact. But keep in mind that this is based on intentions such as your goal of the interaction and yours and others individual styles. And something that's really important to note is that there's a difference between freedom of speech and freedom of reach because there's a lot of people that have a lot of followers online and a lot of them are spreading misinformation and disinformation quite readily. So just because someone has a lot of followers, it doesn't mean that what they're saying is more true, but it does mean that there are more potential people who will read, share, and believe a post that these people make, whether or not it's true, and spreading things that are incorrect. So some of my top tips here. R2, with connections, focus on video and audio calls or audio messages. I love an audio message. And this is instead of just liking someone's post or just sending them texts. Take the time out to speak to someone or send them an audio message. And remember to be present with yourself, with your time and with others. An example of pause, consider, decide here is before you're about to share another link about whatever the latest news outrage is today, I want you to pause and I want you to consider if you're offering anything new to the conversation. And maybe you might decide that you're not going to share the article online to whoever your followers are, but maybe you'll just share it with a couple of friends who will understand and who can maybe give a bit more depth and a, a good discussion about it. This week, it'd be great if you could action the following. Take the time to organize to speak with your top three friends, in person, on Skype or Zoom, or on the phone. Let's move on to productivity now. And this is focusing on being really efficient with your time and energy. It's managing all those things really well, which is really important when we're working from home more and more. The focus is on minimizing distractions and emphasizing focus and goals. And it's not just work and financial goals that we wanna focus on here. It's all the different aspects as well that make up our holistic um, being. So mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, and social aspects. In our always on culture, um, where we're constantly connected, we this leads to distractions and shallow work instead of deep work. 
And since COVID, the phrase, how do I get my brain to focus online has been searched over 300% than it was before. So this unfocused time online can fuel feelings of anxiety and increase the risk of depression. And remember, we also mentioned the overwhelm as well. Over two thirds of employees experience this burnout from working from home, but still 55% check their emails after 11 p.m. at night. It's great to have a time to shut off. So here's some of my productivity top tips. 50% is a good one to remember because 50% of work interruptions are self-inflicted. And there's a 50% chance of you reusing your device in three minutes time if you use it now. And I love the stats and this really helps me to remember and direct myself to not get distracted. And I've given you a heap of top tips today, but like really focus on just one thing at a time. There's a heap of things and there's always more that we can do, but just focus and commit to one thing at a time. And if you're not sure where to start, the first one I would do, and I strongly suggest everyone do this, is to turn off all notifications. Another way to keep yourself focused when you're working is to keep your devices out of reach. Use silent on all your devices so you're not getting distracted. And grayscale is really important so you're not reacting to those red flashes and notifications you get. It's really great to get into schedules, like regular and realistic routines that you can commit to. Lists and goals are really important too. And something I've been doing for a decade or so is to um, focus on one large and one small goal each day because our to-do list is never ending. So as long as you focus on those two, that's a good day. Make sure you're scheduling time for things you need to do and things you want to do. Time for your social media, time for checking and responding to emails, and time for that same thing with texting. Make sure you schedule in time to rest, stretch, and have device-free breaks. And so a pause, consider, decide aspect here is maybe when you're about to check your phone the next time, whether or not you have a notification, I'd like you to pause and I'd like you to consider, do you need to be checking your phone right now? Hopefully you will decide based on those 50% stats I mentioned before that you need to focus on your work. So you're going to check your phone later when you have a break and when you've put that scheduled time towards that. It'd be great if this week you could turn off all of your notifications from things other than people. Now our last section in the digital equilibrium model is healthy boundaries and self-care. Now both of these need to be understood to be able to express your expectations and to express your boundaries. And remember, it's a holistic view, mind, body, social, spiritual. And this is not just your physical environment, but it's online as well. Remember, digital wellness. Some of the things you can do that would improve um, your self-care is having quality, healthful food, proper, regular sleep, movement, breaks, exercises, time outside, particularly in nature, Focusing on gratitude, writing three things that you enjoyed in the day that you're grateful for is a great start. Focusing on um, improving your well-being and improving your mental health. So 60% of people experience screen-related aches and pains that cause them physical drain and less productivity. But two-thirds of these people said that they still turn their phones on first thing in the morning. So maybe do something first before you turn your phone on in the morning. Higher social media use is correlated with self-reported declines in mental and physical health and life satisfaction. But nature is an antidote to feelings of overwhelm, to having attention fatigue, and it enhances our cognitive performance. 
So here's a few top tips for this section. One of them is to move a muscle to change a feeling. This is where you have regular breaks away from devices, especially going outdoors. And remember that movement, particularly in nature, can improve your focus, improve your overwhelm, and give you the mental capacity for learning and understanding. I'd like you to focus on decluttering. So when you organize your physical space, this helps with mental space and being able to have a positive mindset as well. Pruning your online connections or even just people in your life is great to do as well. If you're going online, it's just negative all the time or you're comparing yourself in a not so positive way to other people, they're the ones you need to get rid of first. Remember, every time you log into something, I want you to log out of it every single time. This is like putting a barrier in between um, you deciding and giving you the space to make a mindful decision whether or not you want to log in into an app. Instead of it just always being on and you're always being logged in, you don't have that step in between to say, yes, I do want to log in. And hopefully you can make time for positive things and things you love in your life. People, situations. Make sure that you have good and regularly timed sleep. Do some of the things that are good, not just mentally, but physically, like yoga and meditation. Healthy food, like more greens and whole foods, can never do you wrong. And remember the gratefulness, inspiration, and creativity is very important. It's essential that we learn and experience something new as much as we can. And it's really, really important that we have device-free areas and device-free times. So this can be at the dinner table, no devices, or after 7 p.m., no digital devices, or you know, every couple of weekends, device-free weekends. So in this um, section, another aspect to pause, consider, and decide for could be next time you're sitting at your desk, you're being there for an hour or so, um, getting in the zone, but you do probably need to get up and have a bit of a break. I want you to pause. And I want you to consider, could I use this mo mo moment to move a muscle and change a feeling? And hopefully you remember how positive it is to move, and especially if you go outside, and that you will make a decision to take a short break focusing on movement where you do some stretches, walk around when having a cup of tea or coffee, go for a short walk around the block or catch up with someone to do something active. This week I'd love for you to clean your emails, desktop images at least and your desk. Factor in time for movement and downtime away from your screen. Remember that the price of anything is the amount of life that you exchange for it. And all these tips I've gone through today, you can download on my new Digital Equilibrium website. And hopefully that has helped you today. And this is my website where you can see more information, read more information and get the poster. So thank you very much for your attention today. I will put up the video on YouTube and the slides will be on SlideShare. They're all my websites and that's my Twitter handle and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.